Hey everyone, welcome back to the tax show for people who owe. I'm Dave. And I'm Phil. And today we're talking about penalties. And in a prior episode, we talked about how penalties can add up to as much as 47.5%. Today, we're gonna to talk about how you may be able to get rid of some of these penalties, and Phil is gonna help us with that. Ready, Phil? I'm ready. Okay, so what are some of the ways, or what's the technical term to get rid of tax penalties? It's called a penalty abatement, David. Um, and there are a few different ways, but there's two that we'll talk about today. Okay, so let's say I have a tax debt from many years back, like a lot of our clients would call us for, uh, and I have a significant amount of penalties. What are some of my potential options? So the first and easiest one is called a first time abatement. And it actually just checks for a few simple things. First mm. of them being, did you file all your returns three years prior to the year that you have your penalty? Is that for when I request it? Or is it when the penalty was? For when the penalty was. So okay. say it's for your 2010 uh, tax year. Okay. So 2009, 2008, and 2007, did you file those returns? Got it. So that sounds like a pretty significant amount. It can be a significant amount. Is there any cap on what these penalty abatements can look like? How much they're going to waive? Uh, no. Uh, for the first time abatement, it's going to be the entire amount of fair to file and fair to pay penalty. Wow. That sounds significant. That could be as high as 47.5%. So Phil, I'm gonna ask you, put you on the spot here, what is the largest penalty abatement you've ever achieved for a client? Uh, using the first time abatement, I believe the largest one was about over $150,000. $150,000, that's an amazing number, great job. I will tell you that that's not something that's gonna be available for everyone, but, and Phil's overseen hundreds of thousands of cases here at Optima. So, what's more realistic for a taxpayer out there who owes some penalties? You're gonna hate this answer, but it depends, right? Um, it's proportional to how much you owe, right? Okay. As you know, uh, penalties are based on the liability outstanding. So um, if you were gonna stick me to an average, you know, a few thousand dollars is what I would expect. Got it. So what if, is there any sort of strategy around some of these penalty abatements that you use? Yeah, so the first thing we always check for and for every client that we represent is um, the three years of compliance. And okay. what I forgot to mention, David, is not only do you have to file those three years, you can't have owed, Oh. any penalties during those three years. So it's not just compliance, it's good compliance. Got it, so on time and compliance, meaning you're paid on time as well? Exactly. Got it, so there are key asterisks here and you said you review that for every client you take on. Yeah, and the key thing to reviewing this is by pulling transcripts. Got it. In particular, account transcripts um, for the three years preceding and if we don't see that they qualify, we keep looking for a year that might qualify. Got it. You mentioned that there may be other options for penalty abatements. Now, could you unpack some of that? Yeah, so less common because it really depends on your facts and circumstances is the reasonable cause abatement. Hmm. Uh, and just like what it sounds like, you have to have a reasonable cause why you didn't file on time or pay on time. Got it, so for example, if uh, say I'm military and I'm deployed overseas or potentially incapacitated, I can't file my return, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so it would have to be something very severe where maybe you don't have access to your books and records, but it's not simply, I forgot, right? Got it. Okay, um, so let's hone in on the interest piece because we talked earlier about how interest compounds daily, yep. includes the penalties so it can grow dramatically over time. What happens to the interest when a penalty is abated? A um, little bit of bad news, it doesn't get abated, oh. but it does get adjusted, David. So in a roundabout way, you will see an overall reduction in your debt and including interest. So. Mm -hmm. um, the proportional amount of penalties that are abated, the corresponding interest will also be adjusted downward. So the interest isn't abated, but it is removed, right? So that's actually better news than I thought. It is removed and they won't have to pay it. Right. So thanks for covering that, Phil. So let me ask you, from the IRS standpoint, are they ever forthcoming about who is eligible? Will they tell a taxpayer they're eligible for an abatement? What we found is we always have to ask for it mm -hmm. um, and it's not really available to the public. Got it. So if you're concerned or wondering if you may qualify for a penalty abatement, I encourage you to download our tax app where you can get a professional review to see if you're eligible via your transcripts like Phil mentioned before. Phil, any last words for our viewers today? Uh, as usual, do something. Don't let those penalties grow unabated. Good word. Thanks for joining us everyone today. We'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today. Please be sure to like and subscribe so you are up to date with all the information you need when you're taking on the IRS. And as always, do something.